This is the planet we share. Each week, we travel above, below, and across its surface on a journey of discovery. This week in Wyoming, pronghorns on the move, documenting a great American migration. In Peru, the bite of the vampire bat puts rabies on the map. And in Tasmania, a devilish marsupial gets a helping hand from some young conservationists. This is Wild Chronicles. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Boyd Matson here in Washington, D.C., in the cartography department at the headquarters of the National Geographic Society. We put together A lot has changed here since the first society map was drawn by hand in 1915. Computers and advances in technology, such as GPS, have made maps more accurate and more easily updated. You can find some National Geographic maps online at the Society's website, like this one of Ellesmere Island, where we're headed next on a dog sled expedition. For a decade, Arctic ice has been melting at a rate unparalleled in recorded history. Now a team called Global Warming 101 is setting out to discover its impact. Veteran polar adventurer and former National Geographic explorer and resident Will Steger leads the team. The expedition plans to travel 1,400 miles across Canada's Ellesmere Island on the far reaches of the North American continent. Man, I have a hunch we may need more rope. We'll see here. We've got a good wind chill here, probably about 50, 55 below zero wind chill. But a perfect day for us. Uh, it's clear that it's going to be light until about 11 o'clock. A group of young explorers who've picked up the torch of polar exploration joins Will on the adventure. Hey, this is Sam Branson. We're here outside uh, Resolute Hotel. We've been packing up our things. The team hopes to draw attention to the polar climate crisis. From their high Arctic journey, they'll post photos, videos, and web logs online. I think the dogs wants to get going, too. The team heads out from Resolute Bay. For the first few days on the ice, the explorers enjoy flat terrain and clear weather. They're doing good. Heavy sleds, so it's a bit slow, but it's a good, beautiful day. Nice to be out on the trail. The temperatures remain well below zero, making frequent stops for high-calorie meals a must. On my lunch menu is nuts in soy sauce, nuts in brown sugar and butter, and raisins. The dogs agree it's time for a break. But the easy sledding and good luck soon run out, and the team hits unexpected rough ice. Once this icy rubble field was a slab of Arctic sea ice, but rising polar temperatures cause the ocean ice to break up over the summer. As it melts, it moves southward into the expedition's path. Yeah, today we thought we were going to have an easy, an easy travel with uh, making lots of miles, and then we ended up in the worst rough ice that we've seen so far in the trip. The team battles through the rough ice chopping a trail as they go. The dog strain to pull the sleds. As fatigue sets in, a new danger lurks. And amongst this labyrinth of ice is a wonderful land carnivore, the biggest one in the world. Some of them are out to eat us. The rough ice conceals polar bears on the hunt for seal pups. While we were doing this, Polar bear came back to visit us, the same one that uh, came up behind Eric's sled a bit earlier in the day, we think. It would be nice to get out of here. It's like a minefield of bears. <laughs> They're all over the place here. I've never seen so many bears, actually, all sizes. The expedition team sets their sights on the Ailes Ice Shelf. In 2005, the shelf, about the size of Manhattan, snapped off the coast of Ellesmere Island. 
It drifted out into the ocean and was locked in place by the winter freeze. The explorers rendezvous with the ice shelf before the summer thaw sets it free to journey onward. It's a significant moment for the team as they stand on ice that the early polar explorers once stood on. The new position of the ale shelf reminds the team they are witnesses to change. Nice, it's nice, but it, it's sad in the same way. It shouldn't really have been here. The ice here on Ailes has been frozen in time for more than 3,000 years. At this point, this thing's going to melt. Um, I'm not sure how, how soon. Chances are it'll break up before into smaller and smaller pieces and then eventually completely disintegrate. So it's 10,000 year life is coming to a sad and bitter end. Winter's last gasp chills the team as they leave the Ailes ice shelf. It brings one welcome surprise for the weary travelers, Arctic wolves. They've come to check out the intruders. That's the shot I was waiting for. As they near the end of their 1,400 mile expedition, the team hits yet another obstacle caused by global warming. The spring thaw starts early, catching the expedition off guard. We're literally in the middle of the spring thaw. We're up at the headwaters of the ice cap, the Mueller, Mueller ice cap, and uh, just in the last 24 hours here, this river is rising, so we've had to skip around it a few times, but it's gonna be a great adventure here the next day. We got about 20 miles. Uh, 35 kilometers before we get to the ocean. Finally, the team reaches the home stretch. 30th year, we're at Rika. That's our 63rd day of the expedition. We just arrived uh, at a very good, very good trip here. Steger hopes this has been more than just a personal journey, that it will spark public interest in the fast changing conditions of the far reaches of our planet. That wraps up this edition of Wild Chronicles, the show where we travel the world to bring you the important stories about our planet. And thanks to our cartography department here at National Geographic, we usually know where we're going. Thanks for watching. Wild Chronicles is sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. To find out more about your planet, come to www.nationalgeographic.com.